Yeah, so far. It's so early to tell, but, you know, uh, as everyone knows, we've scheduled a few of these uh, early ins at some racetracks, uh, give the teams our um, and, and get get the best information they can to prepare for this this weekend's race. So all in, uh, you know, things are going pretty smooth. See what comes out of it. We'll take some questions now for uh, Robin. Raise your hand. We've got Jeff right here and we got Alan. And Bob, we'll hit Mark. Go Jeff ahead. Clark, Jeff Clark from USA Today. Robin, um, Denny Hamlin was saying he's not planning to pay the fine um, that he was given for his comments. What, what would be the procedure? How long does he have to pay, and what would be the procedure if he does not pay? He, he also has the ability to appeal. Um, and so, the, you know, the fines are those windows yet where it's where it seems to be a problem let's go over here to Alan Alan come on NASCAR.com on the on the testing side I mean do you expect to see differences from the, the Charlotte test on that mile and a half track and what we learn here I mean I know it's been a few months so I mean have there been gains from the teams that you'd like to see or things you've learned well it's it's not really for us it's for the teams but I expect a, a, a number of things to change you know the weather for one wasn't really ideal at Charlotte uh, you know but but uh, this this is a great racetrack and and it's got a lot of racing room on it and so when we were at Charlotte the the the, the car inventory was quite limited at the time so people were a little more tentative as far as being aggressive on their cars and there was really no no reason to be that way. They're just trying to learn their way around. So this is quite a bit different test uh, for everyone because it is a race car. It is an opportunity to get tuned up for this weekend's race. I think Bob had one, and then over here to Mark from Las Vegas. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Bob Hocker, Sporting News. How would you evaluate uh, this car so far after two races, and is there anything that in particular that you've asked the teams to look at today or that you hope that they need to look at today? is the last part of it is you know we expect the teams to continue to push the limits uh, of their equipment and and that's what's important uh, I think early on um, you know there was concerns over uh, over reliability on parts and pieces because we've pushed the envelope out there with cambers and things of that nature in the the rear end housing and and the, the left front end camber minimum was increased or maximum was increased so it's up to the teams to just to, to continue to push and uh, and make their cars to drive the best that they can. So, so far, uh, everyone seems to be doing their job. Um, you know, speeds are right in the range that we expected to see, uh, you know, for the first day. Right here, Mark. Uh, Mark Anderson, Las Vegas View Journal. Do you anticipate this, this speed's increasing pretty significantly tomorrow? And, and is there sort of a cutoff speed that you start to be concerned if, as far as a safety standpoint? No, I, I think we, we've got a lot of margin built in. I mean, this, this isn't, uh, you know, a place that you're too concerned with, with the speed. So they may increase tomorrow. Uh, like I said, today's just a, today's a test day. I don't think that drivers or teams go for 100%. You may at the end of the day uh, block off and try to put a couple of qualifying laps up there, see exactly what you have. But uh, I, I, I think tomorrow will be a better day for that. Let's go over here across the room here. Uh, Jerry, raise your hand. <clears throat> Get Jerry and Mike. Uh, just a little bit follow up. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires. Just a little follow up to Jeff Gluck's question. Uh, where is the limitations for what drivers can say uh, without facing uh, a fine or, or if they can have concerns about the car or whatever? Yeah, yeah. We, we give them quite a bit of latitude, but you, you know, we, we, you can't slam your racing. You can't slam your product. That's, that's, where, that's where it crosses a line. David, do you have a question? Oh, I saw your hand up. We get uh, David Caravello here. Getting you a workout today, aren't we? Yes. It's a big room. Robin, two, two things if I can. First of all, the, the, the melted beads we saw on tires last week at Phoenix. Did you guys get any clarity on why all that, as much of that happened as it did? And do you have any concerns about that here? Heat. It's as simple as that. And, and they, have, um, they have the ability to cool more. And it's a compromise, you know, when you try to run the, the front of the car 
as closed off as, as much as you can for downforce. It's a compromise at every different racetrack that we run at. There's certain places that you run open, uh, some open more than others. Martinsville and, and uh, New Hampshire are places that come to mind where you need as much cooling as you can. And, and it changes. The, the target changes throughout the years because of the speeds. If we get a speed increase or you get the you know, tire grip change or something, you, you tend to run harder at some places uh, at certain times over the, over the years. So um, there is an ability, the, the teams do have abilities for different types of shielding and cooling and things like that. And it's up to them to, to do what they need to do to get the maximum performance, but balance that with, uh, with the, you know, the longevity of the tires. And secondly, do you, do you have to guard against people drawing conclusions from what they're going to see here on Sunday, uh, you branching that out to intermediate tracks for the rest of the year? Yeah, it's we're we're so early into it. It's just it's you you can't really you're making a mistake if you comment on the worst or the greatest racing ever. You know, we the first part of the season we run in so many different race tracks and and we're so busy and. And the teams are so busy over the winter time, um, you know, building all these cars and everything. I mean, there's so when they get to that Easter break, they'll they'll get a chance to to settle in and and to look at the information that they have at hand, and then they'll start to make those improvements on the car. That's that's just the way our schedule goes, but uh, positive or negative, you cannot read too much into any of this stuff. This is. This is a long-term deal here, years and years and years for this car. And the teams, uh, you know, you may have the best race, but the teams will just continue to make it better. Over here, Lee. I'm going to triple shot you, so I'm just warning you in advance. First of, first of all, um, are we looking at a softer tire going forward? Is that something that Goodyear's working on to get more grip into the race cars? They are working on tires that perform better, yes. And it comes in many different ways, shapes, and forms. It comes in tire sizes, tire widths and heights, staggers. It comes in whether the tire is a, a, a softer left and a harder right may perform better or vice versa. So as many of you know, Goodyear continues to test every year to try to improve tire wear or tire grip. And so that, that, is, that is ongoing. They were at Darlington a couple of weeks ago at a test. Um, this tire we have here is the same tire that we ran last year that performed fairly well. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, last week was, a, it was an all different tire. And, and on the test, that particular test, that tire actually outperformed the tire that we ran in 2012 by a couple of tenths a lap. But when we got back there for the race, for whatever reason, that it was, it just showed roughly the same speed. Whether the tire, the car changed or some other things that the teams did, we don't know. Um, but they continue to test and they continue to make things uh, where where the teams get more grip and and tire performance gets to be better. There's a lot of tests that's on the schedule for the rest of the year. And if Denny wants to appeal the fine, what would that process entail? He has to let us know. But he I, has to write a letter. He he'll send a letter in. Pardon me? He can continue to compete until he yeah. He can yeah. say, I'm going to appeal. It's, but it's, just, it's like every other appeal. You know, they, over the course of time, you remember mechanics and crew chiefs or whatever. If they appeal, then, then they, they can continue to carry on business as usual until the appeal has is, is been heard and ruled on. And when the before the season started and you met with drivers, you know, had your competition meeting and, and laid everything out, was there any warnings given to the drivers before the start of the season, um, you know, not to go down this line of, of commentary? I don't think so. I think th those were some of the conversations we may have had a few years ago. Um, but it, it, it's more of a matter of fact that, that you can't criticize uh, your, your core product and what you're trying to do. Constructive criticism um, is one thing, but uh, you know, there's different there, there's different statements that people made that that are that are damaging, and that's that's where we go. We we won't tolerate those types of things. Who else had a question? Reed, and then back to Jeff. Uh, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Just to just to clarify on that, um, if he, when he does appeal, does that 
does it also go to the National Stock Car Racing Commission and then potentially to the Chief Appellate Officer? Is, that, is the process the same as it's for a competition same. fine? Yep, this, this isn't any different than an illegal part or piece. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, you reference it being damaging. Um, for, refresh my memory, when you met with the drivers, wasn't there some sort of data that you guys had had, like poll data where you showed them the impact of their comments on the on the COT? Is that where you guys believe that um, you know some of these comments about the racing can affect fan opinion? Yeah, that that was so long ago. I I I can remember part of that vaguely, but I mean we've you know you have to remember we we meet over the course of the year more than just once uh the beginning of the season just happens to get more headlines uh than others um but but we've been meeting with teams for on a regular basis for quite a few years now and i think it's fair to say that any type of negative comment it doesn't do you any good okay Got some uh, more. Bob, you got one? Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. Just checking. I mean, have you guys haven't made any sort of changes to cars or fencing for this week in relation to anything that Pardon you found me? out? Ted. You you haven't made any changes to cars or fencing because of anything that you found out in the uh, uh, no. nationwide event? Okay. No, no. And, and that study, it's it's that's going to take some time. I mean, we have to go in and really do it's going to take a while to to get that thing reconstructed and you know we'll continue to work with the experts uh you know steve o'donnell was um, brought you guys up to speed last week there's nothing more to report right now on it we just we just have to continue our work and um when there's something to report we will be more than happy to let everyone in on it <laughs>